Hey Garden Sid fans, it's Kimber down at the farm picking pumpkins. And I know it's time for everyone else to be picking pumpkins too, but what kind of pumpkin should you pick? It all depends on what you want to do with the pumpkin. Let's go check out this pumpkin stand and see the different types of pumpkins that they have and what you can use them for. This is a pumpkin stand right down the street from my house. And I absolutely love to stop here every year because I love to support a local business rather than just buying a pumpkin at a retail shop. And I really love to bring our children over here so that they can experience going to a farm and picking a pumpkin that has been freshly harvested. Now, when you decide to go out and pick a pumpkin this year, no matter where it is that you're purchasing it from, you need to know the right kind of pumpkin for what you'd like to do with it. Do you want to eat your pumpkin? Do you want to decorate with your pumpkin? Or do you want to carve it? Based on what you'd like to do, you need to get the right kind of pumpkin for that. So let's go around and look at a few pumpkins and see which ones are right for the task. Now, what makes a pumpkin perfect to take home? No matter what type of pumpkin you're choosing, whether it's one to eat, one to decorate with, or one that you would like to carve, you need to look for the same key indicators that a pumpkin is perfect to take home. Now, this would include having a firm rind, and you can take your nail to it and slightly press it into the pumpkin. And if it doesn't make a dent whatsoever, then it's good to go. But if your nail pushes into it, then it's either underripe or overripe. You also want to look and make sure there, there aren't any visible rotting spots on it. You don't need any help having your pumpkin rot ahead of time. And especially if you plan on eating it, you don't want a rotten pumpkin. And finally, if you're still not sure if your pumpkin's ready or if it's good to go, then you can just thump it with your finger. And if you hear a hollow sound, it's a good pumpkin. I absolutely love a variety when it comes to decorating and stacking pumpkins are great because they have that they're nice and flat on the top so they're great for stacking on top of each other and that gives you a great contrast rather than all of your pumpkins being flat on the ground you can stack pumpkins so that you get some heightened dimension to your display and stacking pumpkins come in a really good variety of colors. So you can put that splash in there as well. Now, warty pumpkins, oh, those are so fun because everybody has the soft skin pumpkins, the straight flat pumpkins. But if you get a warty pumpkin, oh, they're so fun, so different. And of course, I love the Jack B. Little or Munchkin pumpkins because there's so many giant pumpkins out there that putting a little bit of small pumpkins in your mix really brings everything out. And of course, they're really good for outdoor or indoor decorating. Here's a variety of stacking pumpkins that I found at the farm. And I absolutely love the variety of color here. Now, don't forget the miniature pumpkins when you're out there picking pumpkins at the pumpkin stand. I love all these munchkins and I might have bought 30 of those as well as two of the baby boos. Don't forget to put in a variety of color. As you can see here, I have some orange pumpkins and some yellow with stripes and orange with stripes and the baby boos are white. When it comes to cooking pumpkins, however, there are some really great ones out there. Now the Jaredels are fantastic for soups and stews. I really love them specifically for stews. Whereas the Casper is really savory, but it actually can be really good with sweet dishes as well. But the Cinderella pumpkin, which is what I grew this year primarily, is perfect for breads, pies, and my favorite, ice cream. I guess I should say the kid's favorite too. Now the Pepitas hybrid is only good for the seeds. It is not a tasty pumpkin whatsoever for the flesh, but the seeds are amazing if you're planning on roasting them. And finally, I'd love to recommend the Long Island cheese. It is the perfect pumpkin pie. Yes, you can buy sugar pumpkins and you'll see those at all the retail shops, but the secret that all the chefs know is that Long Island cheese pumpkins are truly the best when it comes to pie pumpkins. I absolutely love this pumpkin and it is from the Bordeaux region of France and it is so unique. Those aren't words that you're looking at. That is actually from the sugar of the pumpkin. And this is one that is great for either decorating or for eating. It's beautiful with its different textures to look at with decorating, but it's actually fantastic in soups and sauces. Here's another pumpkin that's great for both decorating and for cooking with. Fairy tale pumpkins are really unique with all those ridges, but it has a great sweet and creamy flavor. 
When it comes to carving pumpkins, there are a lot of choices, and traditionally you'll see field pumpkins, and more specifically, Connecticut field pumpkins. They are at all the farms, all the farm stands, and all the retail shops. Those are the big, heavy pumpkins that most people are used to carving up. But you could try something different, go against the norm, and maybe try carving a white pumpkin this year. When you pick a pumpkin to carve, make sure that you choose one with a long stem or handle if you want to think of it that way. You need some leverage so that when you cut the top off of the pumpkin, you'll be able to lift it up. So if you see over where my daughter's sitting, they have cut the handles or the stems long enough. So when you're in the field and you're picking pumpkins, make sure you look for one that you can cut and give at least three to five inches and maybe even eight inches worth of handle. This is another farm stand that's by my house, and I really love this one as well because they have a huge variety. You should see all the beautiful colors and sizes just from the road that they have going. But go and stop by a farm stand and see if they have pumpkins that they've grown. You will be so surprised at the variety and the color that they have. They are so many different stacking pumpkins, so many different colors and textures and shapes. We've all done the traditional field pumpkins and had those by our doorstep. But maybe this year, branch out a little bit, try a local spot and pick a really unique pumpkin. Here are three of my favorite pumpkins. And I have to say that the Cinderella pumpkin is by far my favorite this year. And that's because that's primarily what I was growing. And this particular picture is my pumpkin that was growing over the fence this year. So it was really fun to watch this one grow. But Cinderella pumpkins are really unique for their color. They're really more of a vibrant and maybe burnt orange color rather than the traditional pumpkin color. So that's definitely my favorite pumpkin. But I also really like the pumpkins that have texture in them, as well as those that have multiple colors in them and that aren't traditionally just the regular pumpkin shape, but those that have maybe some lobes on them or maybe are flattened. Those are really great too. So what kind of pumpkin are you going to pick this year? Are you looking for one to eat, one to decorate with, or one to carve? There are so many possibilities. Why pick just one of those? Go crazy and enjoy the season. Pick lots of pumpkins and have a wonderful time.